So yesterday we got the second stream of six for MLB The Show 21 from SDS, and it was all about fielding and how they tried to make it better for this year. There is a lot to go over, and a legend that I know somebody was really, really excited to see. So without really sitting here taking too long, let's just jump into it. So the first thing that they showed off was the route to ball indicator. The route to ball indicator is going to be a little line that's going to appear on the field to show you like the best way to get to the ball. So it's an easy way to help everybody, especially those coming in for like the first time because, you know, Xbox and everything is to help those and others who may not understand how to path your way to the ball like the most efficiently. The second thing that they showed off was the base for play. Base for play is for those who are kind of just beginning and kind of just getting, you know, into the game to where in the past, whenever you would play on beginner or any of those, you could have an auto throw and the game would just basically throw to wherever they think that you should throw. But now it'll give you an indication of where they think you should throw so you can do it yourself just so you can get into the hang of doing it. The third thing that they showed off was the no drift ball indicator. So whenever you would field in MLB The Show, there would be a giant ball on the field just basically showing you the area of where you could field that ball. As the ball would come down to land, the ball would shift over to where you would have to be. But the no drift one is going to go exactly where the ball is going to go so you know where to go and you just go there. Again, it's something for those who are just starting out, who want to get into the game and maybe... When you're beginning, you would go towards the one that might be shifting a little bit and then you would get caught in no man's land, not knowing that it would drift a little. Now, these first three were ones that are going to automatically be put in if you do casual. And of course, you can turn them on. You can turn them off. You can do whatever you want with them. If you want the route to ball on, but you don't want the base for play and the no drift on, you can turn those two off and have the route to ball on. You can do whatever you want. They give you freedom to do whatever you want with any of the options the fourth thing that they talked about was the tag up indicator now the tag up indicator has been in the game forever whenever somebody is tagging up to third or home i don't remember second but if there is a chance for a person to tag up your runner would try to go into a position to throw the ball to catch them if they decided to tag up but unfortunately in years past the animations weren't always the best Sometimes you would be just sitting there waiting for the ball, even though you wanted to go behind it, it would force you there so you could not move. This year, however, they said that they added a ton of animations so that no matter where you're coming in for the ball, you will almost definitely get a running animation to get the most out of your throw. The next thing that they talked about was the robbing a home run indicator. Now, this is something that we have seen for a little bit now when they did the first or second uh, coach video, if I'm not mistaken. And to put it in simple terms, there's going to be three arrows on the wall. If you can rob a home run, it's going to go from yellow to green. It's going to go three yellow, two yellow, one yellow, and then three green as the greens fill up. And it also looks like that in this year, they even added a way to jump over the wall to catch some of the balls. That way you're kind of not just going at the wall and just kind of going just a little above it. Like if there's a ball that's a little past and you kind of need to reach over the wall to get it, it looks like those will also be potentials that we can do this year. Next up, they talked about the extreme catch indicator. The extreme catch indicator was a thing that they added last year where if a ball was coming at you like fast speed, but kind of low at the ground, you could decide, do you want to dive or do you want to play it safe and maybe play it off of a bounce? It's going to be the same this year, but they also added an indicator at the wall. So if you're going back at the wall and you see the indicator, it will allow you to either play it off the wall. It would allow you to go towards it and see if maybe you can catch it normally, or if you want to jump at the wall and catch it that way. Of course, high risk comes high reward, or you might mess it up and use like a common and try to do it. And they might end up with a double triple or even an inside the park home run depending on how the other fielders might back it up if you end up messing it up. The next one is something that I think is actually pretty important. They fixed the strafing for fly balls and balls off of the wall. So in the past games, whenever you would be camping under a ball or whenever the ball would hit off the wall, 
there were chances where your player could kind of be like a little off from where the ball might be. So you would want to move the player more towards the ball so he would be under it or in a position to get it off the wall or whatever that may be. And you had chances of potentially sprinting and just completely missing the ball and letting the ball go and do whatever the hell it wanted. I think it's going to be nice to allow us to slow the player down, get him where we want him, and just be able to get the ball and go. My only concern is if they try to take the strafing too far. I don't want to be trying to go make a catch at the wall, have my player get to the wall, and then start strafing if I don't need him to. That is my only concern. I don't know if it's going to happen. Again, that's going to be, we will figure it out when the game comes out, if stuff like that happens. The next thing that they talked about was the off-wall catches. So like we've been talking about with a bunch of different animations, indicators, and everything else, you have to play the ball off the wall if it hits the wall. In the past, of course, like I mentioned before, if you're not in the right spot, the ball will bounce over your head or the ball will bounce just a couple feet from your glove because you just weren't in that perfect position. But this year, of course, they added a lot more animations, so stuff like that won't happen. Unless your player is 10 to 20 feet off the damn ball, he will probably be able to wrangle it in and get it in. If you're not basically right in front of the ball, your player will play like a bigger animation that will basically let you know that no, you're not in the right spot. This is your punishment. You'll still be able to get the ball in, but you're going to have to wait an extra second or two and that could end up costing you the run. But I feel like it's so much better than just getting to the ball, having it roll just slightly past your glove and then you got to go chase it down anyway. Next, they talked about the jump catches. Now the jump catch is as simple as it honestly sounds. When you're at the wall, you can jump to make the catch. But of course, it's probably going to be a hell of a lot more effective this year, where if you're at the wall and the ball might be just going over, in the past, you would need to like run around in circles, go back to the wall to maybe rob the home run if it's going to do that, where this year it looks like you may, able, may be able to stand at the wall and just jump up to get it, rather than having to do the whole circle thing. And of course, if the wall is a lot taller, like in Boston or in Minnesota, then you should be able to just go under it. I don't know if ones off of the wall like that will be automatic or if you need to press the jump button. That is something that I still need to figure out and see. We're almost getting to the end. We got a few more things to go. So the next thing is the off Z axis catching. Now, everybody who was watching the stream basically said, what the fuck is that? And... It doesn't make a lot of sense until you see it in action or actually hear what the hell they're trying to talk about. The off Z axis catching is when a fielder is running towards the ball, they might be running straight at where they think it's going to go and maybe they get there a little too early. So the player will kind of turn in to cut off the ball to be able to throw it in. The thing is, it's nice that they're doing that because in years past, if you were doing what I basically just explained, you would run right past the ball and the ball would roll all the way to the damn wall. So this is a way to allow you to go where you want to go and the player will be able to kind of direct himself, hopefully, to the ball, get it, and throw it in. So everything we have explained so far has basically been outfield, but they did talk about the infield as well. Not as extensively, but they did talk about a few things. The first infield thing they talked about were the dribblers and bloopers. So in the past, whenever there were dribblers, you know, kind of back to the pitcher or up the middle towards the uh, second baseman and shortstop, there could be times where you would kind of lose your depth perception and run right past the ball or you thought you, you thought the ball was here, but it was actually five more feet behind you and you just couldn't get to the ball or you're ahead of the ball, like with the off the axis catching. This year they added things to where your infielders will be able to get to the ball, cut the ball off, hopefully kind of get the ball, maybe hopefully like an inch or two behind them if it works that way and be able to throw it rather than just running past the ball. And of course with the bloopers last year, there were so many blue pits, so many blue pits. And they explained why it happened. They weren't expecting that many bloopers to be hit and they just didn't have a lot of animations to catch them. 
they said that this year they added a lot more animations to catch bloopers so the numbers of hits should go down next they talked about the catcher and the catcher's pop time so for those who may not know what catcher's pop time is it is the amount of time that the catcher can take the ball from his glove as soon as it hits the glove that he can take it and throw it to second base for a stolen base attempt a good number is under two seconds like they said in the video and they wanted to take into account the player's actual like i'm guessing it's going to be like the average and kind of fluctuate around that their i guess average pop time and put it into the game itself so players who have the better pop times will be able to throw the ball faster than those who don't i don't know if it's going to be a actual stat in the game like with speed power contact fielding arm strength i don't know if it's going to be a stat that we can see or if it's going to be something that we kind of just have to know they didn't really go over that and the last mechanical thing that they talked about were throwing accuracy meter changes. They made a couple changes to the throwing accuracy meter. So of course, like in past games, if you're trying to throw to a base and you get it into the green section, it will make the target, it will be perfect, and that's basically it. But they noticed that with everybody that they had watched and their own time playing the game, almost nobody would ever get it into the red section that were at the beginning or the end of the of the meter so they decided to get rid of the red and combine it with the yellow and they i guess they made it like orange because you know red yellow makes orange and now if you get it in that section there is more of a chance that you will throw it away rather than throwing it like a couple inches off of you know from where you're supposed to throw it so they wanted to make it more of a risk if you happen to miss than in the past. Now that we're at the end, let me show you who the new legend is going to be. That's right, the new legend is Grady Sizemore. I am almost 100% certain that Fuzzy is going nuts because that is his favorite player growing up. And I can understand why Grady Sizemore was an amazing player. Just like when people look back at Troy Tulowitzki, he was an amazing player. But then injuries took place. Grady Sizemore is one of those careers that were so good, but he just happened to get injured. And it's unfortunate that we'll never be able to see what his career could have been. But I'm just happy that he's in the game. But that is everything. I don't know how long this is going to be. I have to edit it all down. But I'm happy that they went over a lot of fielding things. Because there was a lot of fielding things that were wrong last year. Things that just didn't make sense. Things that just didn't work right. And it looks like they really tried to make things better. So, next week we're going to get the ball player introduction, the two-way player between your Road to the Show and Diamond Dynasty. So that means next week we're going to be getting some Road to the Show content, and I guess they're kind of mix it in a little bit with Diamond Dynasty because we're not going to get a lot of Diamond Dynasty, not until basically the day before the game comes out. But of course, if you want to watch it when it goes live, the links to their Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook will be down in the description below. It is every Thursday at 6 EST or 3 Pacific. And of course, just like this week and last week, I'll be covering it the day after. So if you want to subscribe or just keep your eye on the channel, that would be fantastic. But with all that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and hope to see you all in the next one.